basketball. We're ready for you, Chief. Okay. Can we have you say and spell your first and first last name for us? My name is Tim Rodwell, T I M, and then R O D W E L L. Chief of Police. I am. Freeport. No, Fremont. Free, Fremont, not Freeport. Yeah, not Freeport, no. <laughs> um, can you tell me, uh, do you have any updates on the, uh, on, on our family? So uh, the campaign that we've had working with the media and trying to get the message out about Tony, Suzette, and the boys um, has seemed to work. We had contact early this morning from a BP gas station manager who uh, believed she had seen the family on Monday the 17th of October between 1040 and 1055. Since then, we've been able to obtain surveillance video and corroborated um, her uh, belief. And we do, um, and we know at this point that Tony, Suzette, and the boys were in the gas station uh, on Monday, October 17th. In Gulliver, Michigan. Gulliver, G-U-L-L-I-V-E-R. Is that in the Upper Peninsula? It is. It, it's a small village along US-2 on the southern uh, side of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Have you personally seen this video? I have. Did they look distressed? Do they look okay, happy, sad? Uh, during the video, it looks like one of the boys attempted to use the gas station's telephone, uh, but as far as distressed or any other issues, it, it's really ambiguous to that. Did they buy gas? Did they get snacks, water? Did they buy a bunch of water, a bunch of food? It looks like they filled the, or put gas into their minivan. Uh, so we do know that they were, are, at that time, were driving the 2005 Toyota Sienna minivan. Um, they had made some other small purchases as well. Is that minivan registered to them? It is. Okay, because we heard yesterday from neighbors that it wasn't a van vehicle they usually drove. Uh, they had three vehicles inside the home, and the two other two others had been accounted for. Okay. Um, do you know? Uh, they wanted me to ask. Um, sorry. Uh, did he have a right? Did Anthony have a record in North Carolina? Do you know of any of that? I have no knowledge of that. Okay. Um, they, do you know what direction they were headed um, when they were in the Upper Peninsula? They were headed eastbound. Um, so US-2 in that area sort of follows that southern border. So when we say eastbound, they may have been going on a, on a northeast um, you know, direction, but it was eastbound on US-2. Got it. Um, no indication of where they might be going yet? None. Are there any, is there any indicator in terms of the direction that they would be going, like what the next potential places they would pass through? So in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, there, this, this section of US-2 is between Manistique uh, and what we'll call St. Ignace. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really rural area. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, the National Forest, and, and it, I would describe it as a very rural area of Michigan. Because we, we have some viewers up there and stuff, so obviously the idea is if you know, we can expect that they're coming to some next spots or something, we can you know, begin to look at that. that um, is there, has the investigation yielded any reasoning why they would go to the UP? Are they frequenters of the UP, or is this something that's just seemingly kind of out of the ordinary? I mean, just kind of what has been the, the idea behind them going forward? The investigation really tends us to believe that you know, both Tony and Susie just really spent their time taking care of their boys and taking care of their the elderly grandmother. We don't know of them taking a lot of, you know, trips other than maybe a day trip to, you know, somewhere near Fremont. Um, but we don't have evidence of camping. We don't have evidence of trips uh, overnight in a hotel or any pattern of behavior like that. Does this feel spontaneous? It to, does. To go yeah. such a considerable distance and everything like that, so... Yes, it does. And the idea of them going eastbound or kind of northeast and everything, that takes them deeper into the peninsula, right? That doesn't let them kind of, you know, come back down or, you know, what, just, just getting that directional map, I guess. You'd have to look on the map to really get it, but it, it brings you closer to the Mackinac Bridge, which we all know is the only entrance to Michigan's lower peninsula from the upper peninsula. So it would lead me to believe uh, they were headed that way. Can I just, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I have some, I have news for you after this, but... Um, your uh, press release, I guess, is corrupted. Oh, is it? Um, oh, that's not great. <laughs> uh, they, at re they asked us if you could resend it. Okay, I can do that. Um, yes. No, sorry about that. 
Um, just kind of the me, you know, talking with us and getting that out there. Obviously, this has it has been beneficial, right? It's been great. Um, you know, one of the reasons I think we all live in Western Michigan is just that sense of community and that that sense of helping each other out. And I think the Sirigliano family needs help right now. And um, no, the working with all of your resources and your and your counterparts um, has really been beneficial to 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 try and paint a better picture of what's going on here and and to get a message out. Is there um, any other uh, any other anybody else see anything or any other um, tips you may have received? We received um, I would say approximately a dozen more tips, but we just cannot corroborate any anything else and some of the tips would involve what I would describe as ambiguous information like so this was one of your first good solid corroborated tips correct it was one of the ones where uh, I could reach back and say I have video and uh, I've looked at the video myself and can verify it um, some of the other tips have included you know a possible gray SUV or a gray van in this, uh, you know, in this state or that state, and it's pretty ambiguous information. Because how many silver minivans are there? Right. When you start looking, you'll notice, uh, that, you know, they're everywhere. Um, anything else we should have touched on? I was just going to ask you for the last thing, like just in terms of now, you know, I mean, this has been, you know, such a fast-moving investigation, especially with kind of the media getting involved and everything like that. You know, what is kind of your continued call to action as you know the you reach kind of the height of it and then you know as you know things start to develop like what is just kind of your call to action to the community to like stay invested stay involved keep you know looking for these people you know i just kind of wanted to hear from your side my my view is is we you know we're asking the community just to help this family and there's the serigliano family from everything i can tell is a very close family and they're deeply concerned and they have members of that family who live all around the country that are coming to Fremont to because they are are, are deeply uh, concerned about everyone's well-being. Um, I would ask that everybody in the community just continue the effort of letting us know when they see them and if they've heard from them. And, and lastly, if Tony and uh, Susie can hear this, that they feel comfortable calling us and um, letting us know that they're okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for making